I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We can all please remain standing for a moment of silence for all of our uh, people on the front line, whether it's domestic or abroad, helping defend our uh, nation, keeping us safe, making sure we're out of harm's way, fire, EMS, um, police, national defense. Thank you. Thank you. Entertain a uh, motion to approve the minutes of the public safety meeting from April 1st. So, motion by Legislator Klein, second by Legislator Trudell. Discussion, addition, deletion, correction. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seems approved. Next, uh, we have a resolution, uh, which I'm actually going to hold off on because I didn't see the sheriff yet. He's in route, so I want to hold on to he and uh, Mr. Mitchell get in here. So, we're going to move into. Um, discussion and I, I'm going to take up Lake Ontario flooding um, because I know that the uh, emergency management director um, we, we are going to have a request in there as well so uh, uh, Mr. Courier uh, good morning everyone uh, I'm going to change up uh, the highlights of priorities on our submission and turn directly to item six with Lake Ontario. Um, in the last week, the status of the lake has uh, changed significantly. Uh, flooding has started in certain areas sooner than uh, was anticipated. And uh, while some people track lake level by you know, how many feet and inches above sea level and try to figure out at what point damage is going to begin, it's significantly more dynamic than that because uh, the biggest player not only is water height, but also wind direction, wind speed, and uh, duration of the wind. Um, I spoke with people at Greenpoint Marina, Sandy Pond this morning, for example, uh, the water is maybe 10 inches lower than it was at this time in 2017, but with a rather strong prolonged wind out of the west this weekend and one and a half to two foot waves, uh, they've already started to sustain damage. So um, moving forward, we've been in conversation with numerous state agencies since last week. Um, later today, uh, I got a call from DOP last night that sandbagging, sandbag filling operations are going to be established um, in Mapleview, if they're in Mexico, the DOP facility. The state is going to provide the bag filling machine, um, a limited number of National Guard troops to fill bags, and the bags, DOP is going to provide the sand. Uh, they're looking to us to provide the pallets. So uh, in 2017, we spent a little over $8,000 on pallets. And as you remember, we don't have a uh, line item, if you will, in our budget from common items for things like this. So I, on the way in, spoke with Mr. Church, Mr. Wilbur. And I'm requesting that this committee authorize uh, $8,000 of uh, fund balance to be allocated into the EMO budget that we can allocate towards um, ordering pallets, which they'll start using tomorrow. So we'll start with that item. So um, we have a need for the $8,000 for the um, pallets. Uh, and I will uh, entertain a motion to move that from fund balance over to. Uh, I'll, I'll make that motion. Motion by Legislator Kassler, second by Legislator Potter. Discussion now. I just want to have yeah. a question. So from now on, then, the, our town's highway or whoever 
with the sandbags are going to go around to protect the buildings, then is that correct? More the so than the, the land, more so than the dirt. Correct. Um, yeah, in 2017, which is a great question, thank you. We had a lot of people trying to protect their shoreline with sandbags, which you just can't get enough sandbags to protect against three, four, six foot waves. So um, we will be more diligent as to what people will get sandbags for and what they're trying to protect. But if they're trying to protect the building or parts of the building, such as to build a, a berm around basement windows, doors, that type of thing, or to keep the flooding from coming across the yard to the house to use it as a diversion, that's what they'll be for. Who will make those decisions? The camp owners, business owners, or the EMS people? That's, that's kind of a tough one to answer. Um, we're we're going to provide the guidance. We're going to ask people what they're going to uh, be doing with it, and because and because part of the piece we haven't figured out yet this year, because this is just happening very quickly, is whether uh, people will come to be able to come to Maple View to pick them up themselves as they did before, <coughs> or if we will send them out to the town highway departments, and then they'll deal with the town. But we will put out guidance to the towns, and uh, I've already had the discussion with one legislator that, um, you know, in the impacted area that, you know, we can't, we can't protect grass and shoreline. It's just physically not possible. So the homeowners really are going to have camp owners or whatever homeowners are going to have to really make up their mind that they want to do something themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they will go to the town hall, town barn. Okay. Okay. That's what yep. I mean. and, so, the, and the businesses, same way. They will go to the town hall, town barn right. and, and request. Okay. Yeah. So now we're back at the spot that 50000 for each property owner that was already spent could potentially be taken out to the lake again, taken out by the lake. Yeah, actually, uh, we had we had photos have been sent in after that last big windstorm that the windstorm blew out walls that people put in and all. So yeah, very conceivably, stuff that went in will go out again. And there was, Renee brought up this morning, um, she had seen online where, you know, the major question is that comes up, and we had a call this morning already about the IJC and this, that, and the other thing, and you know, their taxation rate and all. Um, but downstream, uh, Montreal, that area is really, really suffering. Uh, they've got some major damage, and when that occurs, obviously they they shut back the outfall from the lake so that they don't wipe out the island Montreal is on. So they're having major, major problems this weekend. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, uh, you know, the potential or planned discharge from the lake get cut back even more, which is going to burn, burn our rise up quicker than the anticipated. Any other? Legislator, uh, the possibility of any refund on uh, the money that we're going to be spending or anything? Well, I don't know if you have any more information, Dale, than what I've uh, seen this morning is it, uh, there was just the announcement, so in my eyes, it was, we would have to, in this particular situation, have to spend it. And then yeah, I there. mean, you know, the only way there would be money coming back would be if, again, statewide it got so bad that there was another presidential declaration um, so that there would be FEMA money, but um, chances of that are real slim. But the, the reason I ask that is because, I mean, in the paper just recently, we see the money's come available for uh, along the lakeshore for us to help with the lakeshore, but that's just fill sandbags. Is there a 
the what, what money are you seeing? I, 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 can't, I can't recall exactly which article it was. It was in the Pale Times. What, what, you, may, what you may have seen was the city and the Port Authority getting money, which was back to 2017, which they're just starting to get some of now. And that was based on a presidential declaration uh, to disaster declaration. Just to put that into play, um, in New York State, uh, the current amount is that there has to be, I think it's 27.4 million, don't quote me, sorry about that, let's say 27 million of uninsured damaged public properties. And in Oswego County, also a threshold of I want to say it just changed. So I want to say around $440,000 of uninsured public property loss before they could even consider requesting federal assistance. So uh, they had to work real hard to squeeze those numbers in 2017. And um, it's a very dynamic situation. We don't know what's going to happen, but you know, this takes in counties all the way from Niagara to St. Lawrence as to what happens. So, and the government's looking at raising those thresholds significantly here quickly also. One more question, okay. you, sir. Um, the, the other four Great Lakes, how are they doing? Are, we're going to get dumped with them sooner or later. Are they high also, mm -hmm. like we are? So we're going to get... Yeah, they've had... Actually, what we're getting now is probably a lot of last year's very heavy precipitation out the Western Great Lakes. So this isn't going to go away anytime soon. In this last winter, I believe they had higher than normal mm -hmm. precipitation. More sand action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're Canadian, Canadian flooding. They continue to hold back the water at the dam, so. <laughs> and all this. So. Richard. Maybe I misunderstood. Uh, the National Guard's going to be filling these bags or whatever. That's my understanding. Some, some of them, whatever. Uh, these bags get distributed to the towns or somebody from, we'll say, Greenpoint Marina drives down and picks up both. No. Depends on how, how the towns can handle it or want to handle it and what what the need is. Um, early on in 2017, you know, we had lots of people needed bags yesterday. So they went directly to Maple View to pick them up. Uh, that in itself presented some challenges with what they showed up with to pick it up. Um, and I don't know what the Guard resources are going to be to um, handle that this year. Like I said, this came about 6:30 last night. Probably should be coming together today. So it's going to be a town extra town cost, and what's going to boil out there? In many oh, yeah. cases, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We have bags left over from last year, in the last two years, so but we're still going to need more. I'm pretty positive of it. Yeah, so I, said, yeah. I would make sure that all of the um, respective legislators for the respective towns along the lakeshore make sure that they're communicating, your towns are communicating with emergency management. That's going to be key in all of this. And, you know, Dale right. and his crew are doing a good job trying to stay ahead of it as yeah. much as they can. Um, but make sure that the communication is there and stays there during this whole um, scenario or situation. Yeah, and in contact yeah and make sure your towns are tracking the costs. Highway we have some bags here. Doesn't mean you've got enough, but we got some. But to, but to start. To Richard's point too, make sure these towns are tracking, you know, the costs yeah, for all this stuff. They're, so they're aware of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, in, the, in some cases, people still have their bags out in front of their camps or lining their roadways from two years ago. That's the good news. The bad news is if they haven't been covered with plastic, they're probably already rotten because they're they're designed to disintegrate. Oh. So 
Um, we, we've had a lot of people say, yeah, we went out and did the kick test on a couple of them and the bags just fell apart. So now they just have sand, which isn't going to do much for them. So, um, but the towns are cognizant of the cost. I spoke with Mr. Kassler, um, I guess it was Saturday, excuse me, Saturday morning. And uh, he said, yeah, we got sandbags, but the town isn't in a position to incur any cost or overtime to, you know, for to bring staff in to help people get bags and such. So that's always a challenge. It was in 2017 uh, for the towns to have people to help assist with this. Because people often pull up with their car or their, you know, their yard utility trailer and say, okay, I want sandbags, fill it up. And that's probably not a town responsibility to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you further on that. All in favor of uh, moving the 8,000, say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand approved. Make sure you sign this before you leave. Do um, you want to continue on with any more of your report as long as we're there? Yeah, I have another item. <coughs> um, I apologize. It's not on your list because this came up late Thursday afternoon, but it's very time sensitive. Uh, those of you who've been on the committee uh, in recent years know that each year for the last few years we have received a Homeland Security grant targeted <coughs> primarily towards um, activities, equipment purchases, training, etc. that we can directly connect back to dealing with terrorism and uh, the amount is 194000 and change. Um, in the past EMO has um, worked with municipalities as well as county and state agencies to disperse this money. 25% uh, or about 48,000 is required to go to law enforcement and then the rest can go out to more to law enforcement, fire, EMS, emergency management, um, 911, et cetera. And so uh, we got the information late Thursday, and we have to turn this around and get it back to the state by the 10th. Mm -hmm. So um, we've already set up sent out messages to meet with the various agencies. Uh, about a month and a half ago, we gave them a heads up, start putting their proposals together. For those who have not been on the committee in the past, um, Roughly 75 or 77 percent, I believe, last year uh, went to directly to other county agencies, uh, or fire coordinator's office, for example, coordinates one project for the I am responding communications um, module, I can't think of another word other than module program that all the fire and EMS agencies use and others are adding on to it as well. Um, we had money go to you know, the health department, uh, EMO um, for planning purposes. So about 70%, 75% last year stayed within county government directly and the other went to um, mostly law enforcement or some to the county search and rescue team. So um, our intention, unless we're given other direction today, is to move forward as we have in the past, because we don't have this in to the state on the deadline. It's very simple. We lose it and they give it to somebody else. So, mm. um, so we're on the fast track with this one. You need a motion on that? But no, it's informational. Okay. Just I want to make sure everybody is aware up front that it's that it's here and what we're doing in case there are other thoughts or ideas. Okay. And with that, everything else on here is pretty straightforward, so I won't take any more time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, let's go back into our agenda. Um, we're starting out with a. Uh,
<clears throat> resolution PS1, which is requesting an amendment to the residency requirement of New York State Officers Law uh, regarding the position of the <coughs> Sheriff Corrections Officer and Special Patrol Officer. Sheriff, I don't know if you want to chime in along with the uh, county attorney and get something <coughs> behind it. We're trying to start this countywide as part of the CSI. We've done it twice this morning. We're trying to start uh, a countywide school resource officer program. In order to do that, we have to hire retired uh, certified police officers. And quite frankly, we just don't have a pool of enough officers retired that want the jobs in this county. So we're looking to reach out to adjoining counties to fill those spots. Uh, without it, we're not going to have the ability to fill them. A little background for our, for this committee regarding uh, personnel costs that will be uh, affiliated with this. We will contract with the school districts. They will be under the uh, uh, training and the um, direction of our sheriff, um, but they will be contracted by the, each individual school district. So, Legislator Chesby. As I understand, I read someplace that some one of the reasons we can't get them from us, from the county, is other counties actually take ours correct and now do we pay comparable uh actually yeah we're maybe even intentionally set the salary just a little bit higher so we can maybe steal some of our own people back <laughs> okay and some of theirs okay that's but, what i uh, thought it was though right. especially being that it's no cost to the county it's the cost is pushed back to the school districts mm -hmm. and they're lining up they have the money budgeted they're on board they want they wanted at the beginning of last year <coughs> yeah Okay. It'd be nice if we could have our own guys back and steal some from somebody else. All right. Correct. Rich, you. do you have anything to add that you would well, like to add? The resolution requests that Albany uh, introduce a program <coughs> to men public officers law for deputy sheriff, corrections officer, and special patrol officer. <coughs> At present, they must be county residents. Some contiguous counties already have amendments to section three of the public officers of law, which will allow them to hire a suite of county residents to serve in their sheriff's office is deputy for example so this will go to albany see where if there's any reception and if they introduce a bill and then it has to pass both houses and uh, be signed by the governor so this is the first step we currently have dozens if not more deputies and corrections officers from other counties that live in the city of albany the madison county for example had already requested this amendment uh, about 10 15 years ago and that's one of the, the various amendments. We added the special patrol title, even though people aren't serving the capacity because it's peace officers uh, title. Peace officers have to reside in the county. And then the corrections as well you know, for recruitment purposes. And just one more thing, if I may, is it's, uh, that doesn't mean we can't get preference county residents, which absolutely Correct. would be my policy. We you know, need to take care of people with our own county first. Okay. I'll entertain a motion <coughs> motion for this uh, so, resolution. Motion by Legislator Klein, second by Legislator Potter. Discussion. <coughs> Hearing none. Uh -huh. uh -huh. They didn't think it was going to go away that quick, did you? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I understand what everybody what you're saying. I understand what Rich said. I understand what the sheriff says, and I respect everybody's you know uh, opinion and uh, what they want to do. I just have a hard time saying that we want to take county taxpayer money and pay somebody that lives in another county. I just I, I can't go by that. It, it, uh, it's something that uh, if we were going to put something out there that uh, we want people to live in Oswego County, but yet. Uh, we're going to hire people from outside the county to come in and take jobs that are available within the county. And then people are going to say, well, why do we want to live in Oswego County? I can live in Ontario County. I can live in Cuba County. I can live in St. Lawrence County. I can, I can Madison County. I don't have to live in Oswego County. And we want people to come to Oswego County. We don't want people, you know, hired from outside the county. And that's, so, I, you know, I, I, I'm going on that pre precedent altogether. So I think you'd be on to something if we were talking full-time positions that are going to be 
um, in this particular situation that they were lining up to take um, for a police officer. You know, they have to take a test. They have to go through a whole scenario. These are retirees, I believe, from what the sheriff's already said once or twice in his conversation. And they're only going to be working in this capacity as an SRO, which is, to my knowledge, 180 days, Sheriff, maybe a few more. Or school year. School year, yeah. So, <coughs> I'll just correct you, the resolution, special well, patrol, I, special I, patrol uh, allows so <coughs> hiring retirees. The resolution as written also includes deputy sheriff sure. and corrections with corrections full time. officers. Full but the time reasoning time. behind the resolution is what I'm getting at. Right, but it, it's like you're throwing in, okay, you're throwing in a little bit of something, but what you're opening it up to is you're opening up to the corrections officers can now can be hired. <coughs> we, if we get this through and it goes through Albany, we can now hire correction officers outside the county to, to fill positions. We can hire regular deputy sheriffs to fill positions within the county, okay, that are outside the county. But what we're looking for is we're looking for actually to fill positions that are part-time positions, which I know are only 180, you know, 180 days during the school year. And the yeah, you know, the school taxes, you know, they're going they're going to pay for that cost, but that's still taxpayer money, all right. So if you, if you throw the other two out of there and just put the special thing in there, it's, it, it might buy a little bit, but I, I just can't see it. I, you know, the, the corrections officers and the, and the deputies, if, uh, if anything, you hire them and you say, okay, we're going to hire you, but with a stipulation that you have six to eight months to move within the city of, you know, the county of Oswego. And if you, if you can't, then I'm sorry. You know, I'm trying to protect people to try to stay in this county. Do we have people that are going to uh, school for <clears throat> justice, okay, criminal justice, and they want to be in the in, uh, police officers, they want to be sheriffs, they want to be in the corrections department. And here All right. we can yeah, we, we understand okay. where you're coming from here. Legislator right. Cancer, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Did I understand that the sheriff said that there is deputies that live in Oswego County that work in other counties already? Correct. Right. So they are living here, mm -hmm. another county they work for. Mm -hmm. They're right. spending their money in here. Mm -hmm. They're paying taxes on their property here. So we, we're getting money from them that live here, even though they're working somewhere else. So, so what, what's the difference between the people that live here already working for another county when we're trying to get this done. Yep. Legislator uh, Klein. All due respect to everybody's argument here. Uh, maybe I misunderstood that. I thought the sheriff made it clear we can't get enough people. Mm -hmm. And here's the deal. If they're retired people, and there's a few of us in here, I'm not moving. Not to take on another job. And a lot of us won't. You have a nice place. I doubt you're going to move from it. And I can see that gentleman right there has a nice home. I doubt he's going to move from it. We have to make an incentive here for the people to stay here. I agree, Frank, that they are actually Margaret. They're paying taxes here. They're, they're, they're helping pay some of our other local things, but local stuff we have left. Um, I don't see a problem with this because we got to get people. That's the bottom, that's what he's saying to us. We need people, not us personally. The schools do, and they've got to be trained, and they have to know a lot of different things, and they've got to be able to have re uh, relationships with children. I get all that. I don't want a new guy coming out of college wanting to be doing his job. Be perfectly honest there. So I, I sure, I'll, I'll vote with you on this one. You're right. Legislator Lackley. Uh, if we don't have the trained retired officers here, then I think we have to go to another county or we're not going to have security for our schools. Um, Frank? I, I mean, I I hear what you're all saying, but I know that people are retiring every day from different, you know, from Fulton, from Swigo, police departments. Uh, not every day, but every, you know, every year we're getting people that are retired. And uh, I, I just say that it's there if we offer it to them and we want to keep them here. 
the issue that says that we don't want new people coming out of school being part of the, the workforce, being in crushes. Because I, I asked one of the people that I know that's on crushes, well, I want somebody that, that's going to have my back. Well, we've got people coming out of out of colleges every day that live in a certain county that possibly could fill positions in the corrections department and, you know, as a sheriff. But if they're not going to get hired because they don't have enough experience, well, then why go to school for it? Okay, so I'm sorry. I, I'm dead set on this. If you're not going to change it to amend it to say that after, you know, and I'm not talking about the resource officers, Richard. I'm talking about <coughs> you're opening this up for the corrections and you're opening this up for the road patrol. Okay, the deputy sheriffs. Well, you're not just opening it up for the people that are going to protect the schools. Okay, that's not what you're opening. You're opening it up to the whole ball of game. We're not just going to cover first base. We're covering the whole field now. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to you know abide by that. If you're talking about resource officers, it's a different story. Okay, but if we're talking about corrections officers and the deputies also. Thank you. Can, can I just one more thing, please? Here's the reality, folks. People don't want to be in law enforcement anymore. The number of people taking law enforcement tests right now is down about one quarter of what it was a decade ago. That means the Sheriff's Department, the City of Fulton, and the City of Oswego, Border Patrol, and every federal agency, and the state police are competing for the same people. So by the time we all hire off that list when it comes out, <laughs> That least list is depleted. We're, we're down to people that are unqualified, and we have to make a choice out of those people. If we don't open this up to other counties, we will not have qualified people to fill these positions, whether it's a corrections officer, a police officer, a deputy sheriff, a state trooper, or a federal agent. We just don't have the people if we don't open it up. We're not going to be able to fill these positions. I, I, I just, my last comment. Okay, so it's because everybody wants to move on on this. But I'll, I'll hire as many corrections officers as you want, <coughs> Sheriff. I'll hire as many road patrol people that you want. But I'm not going to, you know, I cannot abide by hiring them from outside the county. I'm sorry. We've got to get them from inside the county. Or the, the corrections and the road patrol will hire you. You live in Onondaga County, but you're going to have to move here within six to eight months. The, the retirees, yes. That are going to protect the schools. No, we're not going to ask them to move to Oswego County for 180 days worth of work. No. Okay. Anything else, I'll give it to you, Sheriff, but not this. I'm sorry. Okay. Any other discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? One opposed. Stands approved. Let's move along here. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a discussion regarding uh, the Sheriff's Department reporting and records management software. Um, we have two gentlemen from uh, Spillman who's here, and then uh, also the Sheriff or Under Sheriff want to uh, give a brief update. Again, the Sheriff. Uh, right, Under Sheriff, he's some on this. Um, I think some people from this committee we've discussed. Uh, the state is doing away with supporting the system that the Sheriff's Department currently uses, the S uh, gas yes. system. Um, they've actually stopped supporting that. So when it goes down, our sergeant and training sergeant Bazin, um has been lucky enough to get it back up and running. But our fear is that uh, the more of this goes on, the further we delay making a decision and a way to replace that, um, we're just going to crash one day and have nothing to back up what we currently have. Um, 911 did go to Spillman a while back. I'm not sure how long Kevin would know that. But this is a project that I believe for about two years that Spillman has been working with us. And when uh, the administration changed last year, um, we kind of delayed everything so the sheriff and I could try to get up to speed on it. Um, for the last three months, we've uh, been trying to get up to speed. We also had a consultant who was helping um, in the records management for the new facility come in and get on board and ask a lot of questions to uh, the sales rep. 
and I believe he's successfully answered for him. So we're just making sure the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and this program has everything we expect from it at this point. We believe it does. Um, we asked um, Spillman to send their reps, and we have uh, Bennett Anderson here, who's our, my main point of contact on it, and also the uh, sales manager, Cameron Housley, is here to kind of give you guys a presentation on what the program is, because I think they can explain it a lot better than I can at this point. Uh, well said, and thank you, Andre Chair. Appreciate it. So, uh, as is mentioned, my name is Cameron Housley, Bennett Anderson. We're here from Motorola Solutions. Uh, we're actually part of their uh, a certain uh, portion of their software enterprise called Spillman. Uh, Spillman is the provider of computer-aided dispatch, records management, gel management, and mobile uh, software solutions for the county. So, we want to give you really a high, high-level kind of introductory overview of first a little bit about who we are as a company, but most importantly, what the solution will provide to you uh, and, and to the, the taxpayers and to the citizens of this county. Um, and please feel free to stop and interrupt if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. So. Great. And as Cameron mentioned, uh, my name is Bennett Anderson. Um, I'm the field sales representative here in Oswego County. And, uh, happy, to, happy to be here. I appreciate y'all. Um, allowing us this time. As Cameron mentioned, we're going to just give you a brief introduction to the company, um, which is kind of laid out here. Uh, Spillman was was opened up into business about 35 years ago and has been in the public safety industry um, ever since, um, doing CAD, records, mobile, and jail solutions, all on an integrated system um, in the agencies that we work with. About three years ago, uh, Motorola Solutions acquired Spillman they saw Spillman as a, um, a unique fit to an overarching software enterprise that we're now a part of that covers everything from 911 um, to jail um, and digital evidence management. So um, we've seen a lot of investment and in research and development go towards our product uh, specifically, but then also to integrate it into a um, overall uh, holistic s software environment that Motorola is doing <coughs> as well. Um, over the 35 years that we've been in business, and the last three of which with Motorola, we have um, expanded into states 44, I believe, uh, from coast to coast. Um, you'll see up in the top right there, New York has got 71 agencies specifically, and um, we drill into that a little bit more on this next slide. Of those 2,000 agencies across the country and the 71 in uh, New York here, I think the one that's most important to this group here is yourselves in Oswego County. Um, Kevin Pooley led the charge to bring our Spillman CAD system um, online here in the county. Uh, it was purchased in 2017 and ultimately went live in 2018. Um, with New York as a whole, we've been in the state for over nine years. Um, we all of our deployments, all but one, are countywide deployments for multi-jurisdictional um, integrated systems. And uh, you can see, maybe you can't see those nine counties that are listed: um, Jefferson County, Tompkins County, St. Lawrence County, Lewis County, Cortland County, Seneca County, um, Rockland County, Cayuga County, and Oswego County with Cornell University and Peekskill Police Department being our only two standalone agencies. The map over there to the right side of this screen is uh, indicative of the areas that we are currently doing work um, and you can see uh, Oswego County is kind of right in the thick of it. So we're going to get in and touch a little bit more on our statewide information sharing capabilities a little bit later <laughs> on, um, but you guys are really going to be able to capitalize not only on an integrated system within your county, but within this integrated statewide system that we have um, begun uh, putting together about nine years ago, like I said. So, so this slide is, is to help give you kind of an overview of the current challenge that you face on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, uh, how we hope to bring together a more cohesive uh, workflow of, uh, of data throughout your county. So, for example, uh, as Bennett had mentioned, right here where it says CAD, that's computer-aided dispatch, that's currently Spillman. Uh, the under sheriff talked about SJS, which is Spectrum Justice Service. That's, a, that's the current uh, and legacy uh, product <clears throat> that's going away at some point um, with the state. They're no longer going to enhance it. They're no longer going to support it. 
And at some point, you're going to be faced with the need to go out and purchase a separate records management system. Uh, you have a separate records platform, a separate evidence platform, call taking. So really, <clears throat> what happens here is that when you have disparate or separate systems, it becomes very costly. They're siloed. They're disconnected. There's no flow or sharing of data and information between each one of these systems currently. You have a different a provider or support staff that's supporting SJS, for example. Somebody else is supporting CAD. Somebody else is supporting you know, um, evidence and so forth. And so really, this slide, as you can see at the top, leveraging investments is critical to success. So you would be leveraging your existing investment in Spillman and Motorola because you've already invested in your CAD system and sort of completed complete the puzzle, if you will, which currently is lacking. It currently is disparate. It currently is segmented or fragmented, however you want to put that. But by, by, by um, adding records, management, and evidence in mobile, you really provide a more streamlined, more efficient um, system through which all of the first responders in the county will then be able to share data and information um, on one system, on one platform, if you will. Um, we're going to just really quickly talk about some of the advantages of the system. So. Um, one, it might conjure up a few questions, which we're okay with, of course. Two, give you a little bit of a better overview of what uh, we provide from a holistic perspective as a company. Um, support options. We do provide 24 by 7 support. Uh, we've been supporting Kevin Poole and his team on the CAD system for uh, a while now since he went live. Ultimately, they went live in 2018. Um, and we provide a variety of different methodologies and resources from which um, uh, Kevin and his team and the greater law enforcement community would be able to obtain support from our systems, whether it be online with a dedicated support rep. His name is Derek Mon. Kevin knows and has worked with him, among other things. So we do definitely, of course, as you would expect, provide full and complete support of the full system. Also, when we come in and we, we bring a new system like this, a records management, a mobile, and a jail management system into the county, it doesn't come, of course, without professional services. That professional services includes training. We come in and we train every user of the system. Everyone that's going to be using that platform from day one would be adequately trained on the system. Um, two, um, <clears throat> we come in and we say we will be on time and we'll be on budget with that implementation. I uh, mentioned here unrivaled uh, implementation success rate. That's critical. When you partner with a company, you want to know that they know what they're doing. They've been in business. They they're, um, have a good reputation. And that they're going to come in on time and on budget for the implementation. That's absolutely critical. Access to data and information. Sort of tying into what I mentioned in the depiction of the left-hand environment, your current environment, uh, sharing data is not the, uh, easy right now in Oswego County. So akin to uh, radio communications and how radio is uh, mission-critical voice communications for your first responders throughout the county, what we're bringing to bear is data, mission-critical data communications throughout the county. So that's another layer of what we call interoperability. So the system will provide you with the ability to search up data throughout the entire county, not just the Sheriff's Department, not just Fulton Police Department, not just Pulaski, not just Central Square, not just you know, Phoenix, right? This is going to provide you with a, a county-wide, multi-agency, multi-jurisdictional data sharing environment so that everybody, since you're dealing with the same people, and sheriff and under sheriff, and you guys know this, crime is mobile. And you don't want to be dealing with disparate and separate systems with, with, with siloed information that isn't widely spread and used throughout the county for a number of reasons. Among them, officer safety. Cameron. Yes, sir. Just a sec. On the previous slide, could you put back up? This one here? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> of um, uh, possibilities or options, including like the last or the LMS, the learning management mm -hmm. system, is that all standard, or is that all stuff that is purchased separately, or if you buy a package deal? It's included. Yeah. We've included in your statement of work, so that is included. That is included in the system. Okay. And just yeah. the, right now, how do we how do we track training for whatever officers? Is that part of whatever data system we have now, or is it separate? There's no tracking. No automated tracking. It's more in folders. Very good. This is just a depiction to give you an idea. At the top it says one centralized database with unmatched integration. For those of you that can't read, I know this some of this type font will be small. We didn't have a bigger screen to be here today. On the right hand side, that is a depiction of a server, a piece of hardware. Okay. Dispatch, records management, gel, and the, and the mobile and the field patrol 
are all functioning off of one consolidated server. So we're taking the current server environment that we have today for CAD, and we're adding to that mobile records management, geo management. So you have one uh, database, one source of information that will supply and support the entire breadth of the platform, if you will, throughout the entire county. Uh, so that through one secure in the center, there one secure login, you have access to, you hope, one name record. For let me just give you a quick example of that. My name is Cameron Housley. Um, chances are, if I'm a bad guy and I'm in your county, my name might pop up in all of the different uh, databases that are existing throughout your county. I might be over in Fulton. Maybe I was involved in a traffic accident in Fulton. I might have been involved with the rash of burglars over in Pulaski. The sheriff, you may have pulled me over on a domestic. Who knows? You don't have a full breadth of, of uh, and um, visibility into that information when you have these disparate separate systems, right? So the idea is you have one database on one system so that when you bring up Cameron Housley, you automatically see, okay, oh, this is the, you know, you have, we do a link analysis uh, that allows you to kind of um, show all the involvements or associations that I've ever been involved with, regardless of the agency, talking up the whole county, but it comes from one system. So it also includes a photo, right? It includes photos, it includes, oh, exactly. Yeah, right, so which is huge visual. for our guys when they're stopping somebody giving a different name. They're going to put a name in it anytime he's going to bother us to work with that photo. <coughs> it's also going to show you flags. <coughs> flags are indicators that if I'm a police officer, I'm a sheriff's deputy, I'm out in the field and I pull over Cameron Housley, I can see that he was involved in a domestic or that he was assaulted to police or that he was, uh, that he's a sex offender or whatever the case might be. You guys will have visibility into that in this system because of the way that the architecture is in the system. I should share this data and information throughout the whole county. So if we if we purchase a system for our sheriff's for our, our county, which means our sheriff's department, something happens in Pulaski, but they don't have Sterling, they've got, you know, Bob status system. How does that integrate without a big technical explanation? You're saying we can integrate from the county with Bob's system in Pulaski. Is that there are several agencies, including the sheriff's department, that are part of the uh, the proposed deal that we're working on right now, including Pulaski, Fulton. Phoenix, <coughs> several is <coughs> I think about the only one that isn't the is, uh, PD. Swigo PD, <coughs> their own standalone and Swigo PD. Yeah. Which we're working at doing integration CAD into their RMS. So our information will dump to them. We just won't be able to see the information they have available on uh, back to us. And I don't want to jump way ahead. Is that integrated too with Fire then as well? Is that something it's separate, separate yeah. piece. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. Now, now, to go along with that, though, so currently, whatever system these individual agencies have, mm -hmm. that'll be able to be rolled into this new system, no matter what they have. Yes. There isn't going to be, like, let's say, um, Phoenix PD has a separate system right now that's, you know, way out there. And, um, <coughs> You're going to be able to include Yeah, so, so when we've had discussions, in fact, Kevin's been part of those discussions, we would call that data conversion or data migration. And we considered, how, what do we do with the data that exists today in those other databases? And there are good ways to, to convert that data, and there are bad ways to convert that data. And so we've had discussions about converting that, not to the live environment, but to an ancillary or third-party database, that you'll still have access to retrieve that data and that information. So you don't lose it, uh, and, but you don't muddy up a new database uh, that you've already started to build there in the county. So, does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Was okay. that removed from the original? I, I, I know we had conversations after I spoke to Kevin about us, mm -hmm. moving that from the data conversion package. Just cost <coughs> it. It seemed like we didn't need it. Was that removed from the bid? It was not. I, um, I think we left it in because we're going to do something. We just don't yeah. know how far back we're going to go. So, it might not be to the full extent that they have currently quoted. Okay. We wanted you to maintain the ability to have access to that historic, historical or legacy data, but it's just that we're not putting it in the new life database. Right. Sure, but we can talk more about that. But you, we wanted you to maintain the ability to have that old data still, and so that's why it still stayed part of the system. So it's streamlined multi-jurisdictional data sharing, kind of what we just talked about a little bit. So this is going to allow you to multi-agency, multi-jurisdictional. Really, we wanted this to be a holistic project. Right, we want this to be a countywide. Bennett had mentioned 90%, and, and, and the system is built this way. 90% of the agencies, not only across the country, but all the agencies here in the state of New York, all these that we just listed off, they're all countywide, except for the Peak Scope Police Department in Westchester County and Cornell University. 
every other county, <coughs> full countywide system, every agency, every law enforcement agency that's participating and sharing data and benefiting from, from the system that way. So how, with, without a, again, a gross explanation, how do we integrate with the state then? What, what, what from, uh, let me ask you from the state, what, you're talking about getting uh, information about community justice in the portal and and, yes. and, and so forth. Yeah. I mean, because like you just explained, you know, how yeah. we're talking to Phoenix with the last guy said, because we have an integrated system, but we're not integrated with the state's system. So you would, oh. we already are. So there's, okay. yeah, through mobile right now, what law enforcement has in their vehicles, they can do a state, um, state link query mm -hmm. and already query that database. They can't update that database in there, they still have to do that locally. Um, so it is live and it's correct. It's live real yes. data. Yes. So okay. querying that database is already already something that we're doing today. Okay. Great. We've made several investments in the state of New York a uh, long time ago. And number one, that integration with eJustice and the portal, um, so that you are able to run those reports um, out in the field and have access to that. You have NCIC information. Um, you've got the New York domestic. And so it is integrated. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. This is just a graphical depiction of kind of what we already spoke about. You have an end user, they want to search a name. It allows you to go out and search all the disparate, you know, whether it's Fulton or 901, all the other uh, police departments in the county, and the sheriff's department, and come out and you have one record, one source of truth, and one, one source of information that's uh, propagated and available and, uh, and, and visible throughout the entire county. Just a couple of things before we did bring pricing as well to discuss with you as well today. Um, Leading up to that, just wanted to kind of give you the model uh, that we follow when we when we uh, provide a new system. And um, 911 and Kevin's team is already on this model with our site license um, enterprise uh, level pricing, so that you get system wide access for the entire agency and all of its employees to the entire system um, for the one and only cost that you're going to see that we're representing today. So that gives you the sense of full ownership of the system. If the agency uh, grows or a new SRO is brought on or uh, anything like that, you don't come back to us asking for um, a, a additional licenses and how much does that cost? Do we have to pay Spillman? You already have that ability um, today and that's the model that you would be moving forward with um, from this point on as well. Just a couple of the, um, the goals and um, a few of the things that we were able to find um, from the CGR public safety um, report that we know that the county heavily invested in uh, last year, or at least that's when the, um, the findings were released. So we've been working with the county for several years now um, with a lot of folks from the Sheriff's Department, with uh, folks from Kevin's team. We've done what we call um, needs analysis. Um, those are day-long events where we spend um, <clears throat> the entire time getting to know the department, the struggles, what they need, what they don't have, what needs to be a part of this system moving forward. Um, and then from ancillary reports such as that CGR, we've been able to kind of boil down, and this is probably grossly oversimplified, um, and there's a lot that goes into these bullet points, but we know, for instance, that you guys need or want system-wide integration, and that's um, <clears throat> for the, the agency itself. Um, the Sheriff's Department will be able to share data throughout from its CAD to records to mobile to jail, um, but then also the, uh, the multi-jurisdictional element that we're talking about as well, so that you're sharing information from the individual PDs to the Sheriff's to 911, and kind of skip to the third point there, but you saw that I mentioned uh, the, all, all the PDs, um, including Cuyuga Community College, that are going to be on this interoperable and multi-jurisdictional system. Um, this is going to move you away from paper records. We're talking about training um, records and keeping track of that being kept on a file on the shelf. Um, that's just one example of being able to remove the the, uh, the paper element. Um, the intra-county interoperability, that's the, uh, the multi-jurisdictional nature that we're speaking to. Um, the intrastate interoperability is something that you guys are going to be um, afforded the ability to join on to as well. Part of the project that we've proposed uh, is a module that we refer to as Insight and the rest of our counties in the state are Insight users too and they share, they push data to a centralized server which every Spillman customer in the state 
that has insight then also has access to. And if you remember back to <coughs> when we were showing the map and where our Spillman agencies are currently, you guys are right there in the middle of it. So potential ability to share and see information um, from from a, a good bit of your geographical surroundings. Um, and then intuitive end user functionality. You know, there's a lot of folks um, in 911 and the Sheriff's Department on mobile that are familiar with this system already. This is going to be adding uh, adding um, <clears throat> value to that. It's going to be adding functionality. Um, the way that I explain it uh, as simply as possible is that you are going to, it's going to be as easy as you want it to be, but getting you to the most uh, pointed and direct information that you need it to ultimately. So those are all elements that are going to be built into this, uh, this proposal and this project. So we want to give you some idea of the long-term cost proposal that uh, we'll present here today, but also hopefully in future opportunities with other committees. Uh, I want to take a minute. I don't know how well those of you can see this, but I wanted to break this down for you. Uh, this is a, a long-term total cost of ownership, so a, a long-term 10-year proposal is what we propose to the county. Um, uh, as, as a holistic kind of view in terms of adding records management, jail, and mobile under the county. So you have a software cost up front. You have services, so complete professional services. I mentioned with training, we come out, we fly out, we bring <coughs> trainers, we have project managers, we have implementation analysts, we have system engineers. All of these folks are dedicated resources to your project to ensure its success. Um, hardware, uh, and then we have a subtotal. Now, you'll see in red here, total discounts. Uh, ben and I and our team have really, uh, for, and we mentioned we've been working with you for a couple of years now. When it comes to this discount, we don't just come into account and present this type of a discount. Um, down below, those full bullet points, I just wanted to mention, these are really ultimately have factored into why we wanted to come to the county at this level of a discount, almost $350,000 off of the system. One is that, one, you're an existing partner. You guys have been a great partner. And you guys, to me, I've always, I've worked in the, in the state here for over seven years. And Oswego County, among a couple of others in the area, has kind of been a gateway from our upstate central customers into our kind of call North Country customers, if you will, the Lewis County, the Jefferson, the St. Lawrence. And for us to be able to facilitate that interoperability and data sharing that Ben just spoke to, we've always wanted Oswego County to be part of our, our team. And ultimately, um, by leading off with the CAD system and now by potentially bringing on the, the rest of the system, that allows us to accomplish that goal. We factor that in. Uh, it's a, this is a long-term um, total cost of ownership proposal. And then we've also put in uh, some escalators in terms of this is something that we feel like the county uh, is interested in and would move forward with um, by the end of the second quarter that we would keep these discounts in place as an incentive uh, to the county. Um, again, this is a total, it's a total of $1,307,901. That again, that is a 10 year total cost of ownership for everything that we've talked about today. That is your full records management, jail management, <coughs> mobile, maintenance <coughs> costs, support costs, and so forth for the extent of that 10 year um, um, cost, if you will. We wanted to give you uh, another uh, view into how we generated additional costs for the county by proposing this 10 year cost proposal. On the left hand side here in blue, what you'll see is a traditional maintenance, so customers that don't do the longer term option ultimately end up paying a little bit more. What De Bennett didn't share with you at the outset of our, of our um, uh, presentation, I guess, is that our average customer across the country, our average customer across the country stays on with the system between 10 and 15 years, minimum. Right? We have some that are 20 year customers, some that are 25. I was up in Maine uh, with Bennett a couple of weeks ago, we have 30 year customers. The point is, when customers come on and they partner with Spillman and Motorola, they stick around. And they grow with the platform. We're constantly enhancing the platform. Upgrades, enhancements, bug fixes, and so forth. You guys get that. You own that. So you're always on the latest and greatest platform that's available to you. <coughs> and so um, what we've said is, what we'll do, if you look at the first year of annual maintenance, the figure is $81,233. Six. Uh, 630 uh, 630, excuse me, $633. I was going to say, we're going to discount yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I told you it's small. small. <laughs> I can so, see it. Can see it. <laughs> so what you'll see is that increase is representative of a 5% year-over-year increase, and that is standard. In the industry, you actually see between 5 and 7%. In fact, your previous CAD system, for example, you guys showed an increase in maintenance every year. 
in a traditional scenario, it's 5%. So it just gives you roughly a 10, a 10 year kind of total cost of ownership um, where you can expect to pay from a maintenance perspective only. And the scenario on the right, what we're saying is uh, for those years that you're pre that you're prepaying that you're part of the <coughs> overall 10 year total cost of ownership uh, commitment, we'll keep that maintenance rate f uh, flat. We're not going to increase your maintenance for 10 years. What that amounts to is over $165,000 in savings just in maintenance alone, not to mention the other discounts that we've already brought to bear for the county. So most agencies these days, when we present this option, and most are, are going for the long-term deal. And they're saying to themselves, one, this is a system that's mission critical to our first responders and what we need. Two, this isn't something that you invest in very often. In fact, you guys are on SGS. You guys haven't really ever invested in the records management system in the county, period, ever. Um, and if we invest in it, we expect to partner with a company that's tried and tested, someone that's been around, someone that can, can not walk in here and say, hey, we're the new kids on the block. We have a new system. We'd like for you to try it out. We're saying we have over three decades worth of uh, institutional knowledge that we've learned on how to support public safety agencies on this platform specifically. And so you're partnering with a company that's been around. And there were part of a Motorola who's been around 90 years. We focus exclusively in public safety. That's all we do. <clears throat> so you're not going to be able to see this. This is way too small. What we wanted, though, to just at least mention at a high level today is to provide you with a different vehicle. Motorola, have, we have our own uh, financing and leasing arm. And so if you were to take this, this uh, deal structure, if you will, and factor it into a, a seven-year lease option, we can uh, provide the county with two things. One, we can allow the county to not pay for two years on the system. And two, we can allow the county not to pay interest for two years without any kind of prepayment penalty. So if you were to pay in that first two years, there's no prepayment penalty. You have substantial uh, cost savings um, you know, options and opportunities you have here in, in the county. And so just at a high level, I wanted to present that. There is an annual a number that goes along with that. It's $237,000. That would be annually, right, until you pay the system off. But there again, you would be able to pay that off sooner. And if you did it within the first two years, there's no prepayment penalty, you pay no interest. And we're actually allowing you to wait two years before you pay it anyway, so you wouldn't make a payment to the company. Motorola has their own financing and leasing arm, so we're able to kind of bring these types of financing um, vehicles to bear uh, for a county. And we do this often with, with counties around the country. That was very high level. We recognize that. This was intended, <coughs> this was intended to be high level for purposes of, of your time. We do appreciate the chance to be here and to present on that generally. We'd love to answer any, any questions if you have. I just have one. I have a long list of but I'll save that. Okay. Just put it into the right now timeline. So, minus um, talking specs and et cetera, if you started on Monday, how long before it's done? How long before it's fully out there? I'm going to say it's going to work. From day one you start, how long before it's fully out there? I'm going to say probably a minimum of a year. Typically, we'd say anywhere from a year to 18 months. The only reason it might be on the shorter end of that is because you already have infrastructure in the database and the server already set up here that we're just adding to, but at least a year. So look, so when you walk backwards from that, and I mean, nothing is going to get signed today, but let's say it got signed um, later on next month. Regardless, a year is a long time. Exactly. That's yeah. fully functional. What about daily functional? I mean, because we, we can't go a year without... You know where we're currently. You're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna be continuing to use your SJS system um, in whatever capacity it's available. Still, we just that's what it's gonna take for us to fully take the, uh, this system together. And really, there's no other vendor out there that's gonna be able to beat that time frame. If anything, it'll be longer just because, like they said, we've already got the first half of it started. So no. Thank <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> you. Any other? So what, one question though, if if they start, if they have issues. The sheriff's department has issues with SJS there with their issue with their system software now. Is that anything you guys can jump in and help them on? Because right now we're scrambling if we do have issues. Um, Heaven have, forbid something happen to that system yeah. and they go down, and that is a possibility. And obviously that's an impetus behind the project as a whole. We don't have control over their system and the state system. We don't support it. We don't integrate with it. We don't. And so really it is, what we can do is prepare for that day when they jump off of SJS and onto the fully integrated countywide system. And we do that and, 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 and 
thoughtfully and methodically and have it prepared. But if that something were to happen, no, there's not. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's nothing we could do that to help. That that's, that's something that Greg Powell has been dealing with. He's really pushing this because even if they could help us, they wouldn't be coming to us. Right. You don't live and agree with it, but you'll be storing that data. Well, right. okay. part of it is the data conversion. So we'll take old SJS information. We've already tapped into the system and pulled sample elements um, out and kind of done that that homework, and we'll just be pulling that over as part of the process. Yeah. Well, I think I saw in one of your slides that the first year of the maintenance fee is mm -hmm. not charged. That's correct. Is that correct? That is correct. What do you consider the first year, the implementation year, or the first year after we've accepted the After you've accepted the system. Okay. It's yes, like right now, CAD's in our first three year of maintenance. Right. All right. We, um, if, uh, not that we can do this, but if we, if, what, which, hey, would you consider a further <laughs> discount if rather than a, uh, an annual payment, we could pay for the whole system at once? So we factored in, Phil, uh, a few different things already to the discount that we've provided you. Mm -hmm. We're actually including Pulaski, uh, Huga uh, College, Community College, is it Community College? Mm -hmm. um, Phoenix Police Department, and get my notes here, and Central Square Police Department. That's something folks remember uh, Lieutenant Moskal, um, he had, before he had retired or left the county. Um, I'd worked with him years ago, even before uh, working with Kevin on the system. And ultimately, frankly, he did a good job negotiating with us and put you in a very good position. And that we ultimately said, okay, we will include uh, these agencies in the deal. Um, we do that for a number of reasons. One is we want you to optimize the use of the system. But that with holes in your system of, of data that's not being shared with them or Swigopedia or whoever else, you know, we want the, the broad use of the system as much as possible. So we've kind of factored that in ultimately to this discount that we've provided you today. Um, okay, and uh, <coughs> what warranties do you provide most of the duration? Yeah, so the standard warranty is 12 months after go live. Yeah. And that's that's standard not just for our company or for Motorola, every competitor, every system that's out there, <coughs> we have the standard 12 month warranty. And then of course we support that thereafter if we the maintenance agreement. So your maintenance agreement is 10 years, what are we doing after 10 years? Then it would just be year over year. So what the benefit of doing the, the, the upfront is that, so this 81, 633, then you would go up incrementally in the, by 4%. 4%. 4%. Well, yeah, where industry You're standard is 5 to 7%. If you do this prepaid lease maintenance, then we will commit to only maxing out at a 4% increase year over year after this. And that's in writing with the agreement. Yes, absolutely. Or at that point in time, we can go back and negotiate like we do with the radio system where we try and go for another X amount of years at a certain flat rate. Yes. But then we might have, Correct. we can incorporate CAD with Correct. that maintenance as well. Correct. But you said if you still have them? Yes. Um, not that I'll be here when this gets put into effect, but it, it, my concerns are training. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I have to go backwards to... I think it was five years ago when we brought started bringing CAD on. I think it was before you, you know, stepped in. Okay. Um, <coughs> we had individual trained in the 911 center to do the training of the people that were underneath them. And it turned out that, that person wasn't the person that we wanted to do that, but it's too late. Mm -hmm. Now we had to bring and pay extra to have the rest of the people trained. Are we going to run into that situation now, or is it going to be an ongoing type of thing that if we've got people that need to be trained on it, yeah. are we going to be charged for each person that we have to send in there? Because I think it was last time it was $20,000 per person the way to send in there and be trained. That was the TriTech CAD. That was that was the, the CAD we just transitioned off of. When we went to Spillman last year, um, I mean, their training package is completely <coughs> comprehensive. They do offer either end user training where we can individually train each person or do a train the trainer course. And that was really left up to us on which decision, we, you know, which way we went with that based off of how the agencies could handle that. Because they couldn't really, all the agencies couldn't handle the overtime to send people in for individual training. So we did do, we did a large quantity of training and they, you know, like a Swigo PD, um, they pulled, sent most of their people in 
Um, there is a large uh, quantity from the sheriff's department also, but then we rolled that out further to the train trainer. The good thing is, though, is we'd be able to leverage and bounce off of each other with the trainers that, that the sheriff's department would put together and the, and the now one already had, so we'd be able to actually you know, work off of each other as opposed to have to hire them to come back and do another training. As well as with our relationships we have with neighboring counties, we've already got buy-in from them to be able to help support this RMS roll-off as well. Um, so anything we may need there. So, so I think this time, I think we've got covered a lot better than we did when we went to the Tri-Tech. Um, when Mike brought that in, just because there was nobody else in the area that was doing anything like that, and nobody else internally to be able to, you know, fall back on. If I could add on to that, so that that, uh, and thanks, Kevin, because Kevin's been through it, so he's experienced it firsthand. He'd be best, I think, to speak to it. Um, in addition to that, you mentioned surrounding counties. So we have a state user group, and so all of your users would be able to go and to work with our state users across the board, and we do. They usually meet once or twice a year, uh, and then we have an annual user conference actually. That we come back and keep up with ongoing education and what's new and uh, tips and tricks and best practices and um, what's changed in the software. What do you need to be familiar with in the software? And then you know the learning management system, the online LMS. We have online tools that we can bring to bear as well, so that you know you have um, Susie Dispatcher, if you will, right? That retires mm -hmm. and uh, Linda Dispatcher comes in and says, "Well, now I need to learn the system." Well, they're going to learn from a few different sources. One, the local subject matter expert that's there. Two from the user group, three from our annual users conference, four from uh, the learning management system, or from our knowledge base we call it, and from other tools that we have available for to to, uh, to train and to provide ongoing support for this person to learn the system. So we kind of approach it from a multifaceted way, from a training perspective, because we recognize the, the value of, of and the importance of that, especially when you have long partnerships. Like you say, people are going to retire. You know, Sheriff talked about it's hard, it's hard to, to, to hire a new, but occasionally you're going to hire a new deputy here. And when that happens, you need to have the right resources available to you to uh, become familiar and acclimated uh, with the system and how it functions and how it's used. So definitely do appreciate the importance of training in the whole perspective. I can't, I can't see the figures. Though. What did you say the $1.3 million figure is? Uh, $1,307,901 and two cents. And we can get you copies of all of this. Yeah. You should tell you were going to say you could take the two cents off. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we I all think around it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. <coughs> Anything that we need to send uh, supplemental after after this meeting is. Yeah, and our clerk has this presentation. We'll make she sure will. that she can have it. Yeah. Yeah. Can I add one more thing, Terry? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and then. So we had started. This is a combined project with CAD and RMS and everything back with Clint Moscow and I had. Um, just unfortunately with you know the sheriff knowing that he was retiring last year and we knew there was going to be a change, they back handled that portion of it. I had to move forward because of our state home connection and we had to make or otherwise we would have tried to do this all at one time all together. Um, because it really that's that's the big thing is it really is an entire project and be able to have the information that the call takers putting in when we're taking an one call not only show up in a car but also be there when they're starting to fill out the report and all the way through the entire process I and mean, it's, it's really the integration is what really makes this whole thing you know one one piece and one it's really amazing you know what they've done and some of the other software providers can do that but there's nothing that's really as integrated as this particular package which is one of the main reasons why we started with Spillman on the CAD side, because the integrations we can do with the other counties, um, and this just is, is another you know, layer to it, and it takes it to a whole other level. So, Terry, thanks, Terry. Uh, Cameron, uh, we've been working with a number of different agencies. Um, State Police has a way that they can transfer some stuff off from SJS mm -hmm. uh, to what we call the Prosecutor's Case Management System. Mm -hmm. uh, the State uh, District Attorneys Association basically has a case management system that's used by I think 55 counties across the state. Yeah. Uh, and we've been trying to find a way to integrate the different systems that come in and mm -hmm. basically push information directly into that. So rather than us having to get it from the sheriff's office and upload it, um, the state police has a way for some of the stuff in SJS to come in. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know, do you have that capability in other counties or are you guys working with? Nifty, or Nifty. I was trying. I was going to ask yes. you what the acronym, the acronym was. So Nifty, yep. yes, we have worked with them. Okay. Um, I would need to do some double checking to be sure that that's something we can do. Okay. Um, the system is inherent uh, with uh, a tool we call DEX, which stands for Data Exchange. 
without getting too technical, it's, a, it's an XML query server that allows you to pull data in and push data out of the system. Okay. That may be a tool uh, that would work to, to tie in with uh, NIPC. NIPC. Yeah. Uh, so that would that would be something I think Ben and I should follow up with to make sure before I tell you definitively yes we can. Uh, but it does ring a bell um, that we've wor worked with that data integrated through uh, in another county. But I would want to do my due diligence before I tell you for sure. Okay. And if you need the contact person there, if you don't have it already, okay. I can provide. I need to have a card from you before sure. leave. Okay. Especially Great. Anything else? I do have one other question. I haven't heard you mention the probation department. How does this affect them? Um, I, I haven't heard that mentioned at all. Well, we did talk about the enterprise site license, which means that the probation department would have full access to the system. You give it to them. So, uh, or however you guys get the DA or whoever, you guys can decide uh, so who we you can give just access extend to. It yeah. from, from the just give it to them. They'd have access to it. So, you know, things like, for example, um, sending case data off to the, the prosecuting, prosecution office, right? Yeah. And, and all of that kind of back and forth and printing of paperwork. You just give them, you know, maybe a query only or view only access, for example, to the system. To the case files, to the to the media, to the pictures that exist, and so forth. Um, then the system is extensible to these other departments in the county because of the site license that we that we offer. So, you would have full access. And Cameron, not to, be, not to get in the weeds, but again, with that, like say from a prosecutor's end, if we're looking in on it, because um, again, we have access to OPD system. Mm -hmm. Uh, the impact system, and for us to pull a report, we have to go to several different tabs mm -hmm. and try to pull information out. Mm -hmm. With your system, is there like a one click or it just kind of brings all the reports together so we just hit print? So, so the answer to that is, uh, is yes. The, the, the mm -hmm. second part of that is it is not part of this package, uh, to be just perfectly clear. We have a solution that we call Vault and Judicial Sharing, and that is the exact uh, concept of ju what judicial sharing is, is it brings all of that case file data together into one uh, element of the system uh, so that you can, with the click, actually extend privileges to that case file to somebody for a certain period of time and so forth. Um, but that isn't something that we scoped out that we've discussed with really anyone throughout the, the project. It doesn't mean that we can't, that we couldn't add it on either now or later. Um, and what I would recommend then is that we maybe do a, a demonstration of that product specifically. Vault and judicial sharing I guess, is the name of that. And that would bring you, I think, what you're looking for there. Mm -hmm. but and, if, and if that were something that you wanted to add to this, we could always do a change order even after the execution so that it didn't necessarily delay anything else. Until then, and if you didn't go with that, what you do have to, well, you know, you do have something today. The site license, you can extend access to, to the system. You can share data <coughs> from the system on out um, as well. It just doesn't bring it into that nice kind of cohesive you know, um, screening like, gotcha. like you were suggesting. Okay. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. If there's nothing more, then uh, we appreciate you, gentlemen, coming in. And uh, if we have questions, I'm sure that you'll be around. Yeah, yeah, we'll go yeah we'll be sticking around. Thank you. Um, right, thank you. Uh, moving along, Sheriff, do you have anything else to add? Uh, it's kind of your time before I go into the report. So. Not relative to that, but just no. to. Uh, give you a heads up. Uh, after Rich Mitchell used them, we're going to have a couple MOUs coming. I sat with Chief Buckner, the Syracuse PD, uh, just some mutual aid stuff for a bomb squad, which we do not have, and sniper teams. Uh, the purpose of that would be give us jurisdiction in the city of Syracuse and then jurisdiction out here if we had a major event. And we need that in order for our uh, SWAT team to be state certified. And the reason we want to do that is it brings our insurance rates down for the drone if we can get the team to stay certified. So once Rich Mitchell is done viewing that, we'll bring it Yeah, we'll he, bring he said there. probably for next month is what yes. he would have yes to go through that. So. All right, nothing else from the sheriff. We'll move along to 911. Um, I'll just real quick speak to uh, our emergency calls answered within 10 seconds. We're still down in the weeds where we don't want to be. Um, that's because we've been continuing the cross training, the fire dispatching, and most of our ships have been staffed at minimum. Um, uh, just a couple activity updates. This past week, we did have a uh, radio system core upgrade. Um, the uh, core down in Ondag County received a uh, major upgrade to uh, 7.18, and uh, 
And uh, with that, we had all of our uh, switches replaced at all the county sites, as well as all of our PCs and everything from now one center for the uh, radio system. And uh, that all went in this plan. There was a lot of planning and uh, meetings and coordination that would, uh, could have had major impact on our um, users, but uh, there was uh, only seconds worth of impact to the now one center. That was all. So that went as, as planned. Um, CAD, tomorrow we start uh, training for the EMS users, getting ready to bring them on the system uh, about a month from now, beginning of June is when we're bringing them on. Um, and we're also going to be holding a couple of refresher trainings for uh, law enforcement over the next month um, that I'm not able to do since I've uh, uh, put a uh, person into the uh, mental and communications technician position, so I'm able to start getting some stuff done here. So. Everything right here. Okay, any questions for Kevin? All right, moving along. Uh, fire coordinator. Oh, did you have something, Frank? <coughs> Still not getting the report. Okay, you should have this past. Uh, <coughs> and now you're going to get me first. Yeah, <coughs> monthly, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You should, you should get me first. Thank you. We're going to back up. I forgot EMS when we did uh, EMO, so we'll go on to uh, EMS and then into a uh, fire here. So, sorry um, about that. Most of it's, that's okay. Most of it's um, pretty self explanatory. I just did want to highlight that uh, our EMT results are in, and all seven providers um, passed. So, we're very happy about that. So, EMS uh, annual. Mm -hmm. EMS Advisory Council Banquet is coming up, so if that's something you're interested in attending when we um, honor life-saving awards and individuals who have been um, selected as ALS, VOS, RN, um, et cetera, providers of the year, you're welcome to join us the 17th. See me for ticket information. Okay. Questions for Renee? Long prayer coordinator. Thank you. Um, again, pretty basic. Um, we are in the uh, middle, of the middle, of the very beginning of our major training. Um, we're actually in the middle of a three-week initial training class for Nine Mile Point for 18 new operators. Um, and as things will go, when we first start up and get things running, things start to break. So, spent some long days for the last week and a half, and. So far, so good. Um, that class goes again the rest of this week and next week. Then we start uh, brigade refresher classes. Um, just completing a round of battalion meetings. Last one is tonight in West Monroe. Um, Bob and I completed our 24 hours of annual recertification training for code enforcement. And found out that the international building codes will be going to a new 2000. I say new, they'll be going to the 2018 version next year, 2020, which means more training, and we'll have to replace all our reference books and all that great stuff. Um, one of the other major undertakings going on right now is have a meeting tomorrow for <coughs> the sheriff and his corrections people to. Um, Put together a evacuation plan for the jail. Um, that's moving forward. We had one meeting and did a tour, and then uh, we have another meeting tomorrow morning. Um, and moving forward with that, and we're going to try to put a schedule together for um, fire drills for all the other buildings. Trying to look and see when the weather is going to be conducive. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear it. That's good. it. Okay. There's nothing else. Uh, we'll <coughs> Probation. Yep. That's there. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you just assume you're the last one. Well, um, our race age plan was approved. The overall plan was approved. We found out recently. Um, couple of caveats to that is they did not approve any of the costs uh, related to the county attorney's office or the district attorney's office. Um, according to the state, what they're saying is that all the resources should have been shifted from the district attorney's office to the county attorney's office as the DA will no longer have those 16-year-olds as adults, so they will be prosecuting them in criminal court. So 
I asked about an appeal process to that, and they said there isn't any. So in other words, because what we're funding already, the portion under the DA's office, we should just move that funding to the DA's office. That's what they're saying. Yep. They did, didn't they also suggest that we might be able to recover some of those costs by having a claim through DSS? I, DSS is going to be responsible to do something for all of the claim except for probation related expenses. I don't know. I didn't see where they said they were going to be able to pay for any of those for reimbursement. Yeah, that's right there. Yeah. And across the state, I've spoken to other directors, other departments that were approved before us, and they said that across the state they haven't approved any of those expenses. It would be nice for them to tell us that. I know. The thing is, right, they asked us to, to submit all those costs over and over and over. Every time we revise the plan, they want us to modify the, the request for those two departments, and now they're saying we can't get reimbursed for any of them. So they figured out how much it was going to cost. Well, I was paying. <laughs> you know, which it is true that some of the 16 year olds, you know, most of the 16 year olds will now be at the county attorney's office or else with probation for diversion. So it is going to take work away. But you know, it, it's, those cases are more work for the county attorney's office as they need to have been for the district attorney's office just because I'm going, you know, in family court, there's a lot more appearances, there's a lot more, so it is what it is at this point. But um, probation, we, we're, we're um, approved for all of our expenses. So. Okay. Just have to find out how we're actually going to claim those expenses. We'll hopefully in the check in not two wow. years out. But anyway. Well, we, yeah, and we have requested a probation officer to pay <coughs> probation waiting costs, but those costs were based on projected numbers from two, actually from 2017, and our numbers have not come anywhere close to what we predicted for probation for those 16 years. So um, I'd like to hold off and see what happens with that. Uh, yep. Um, groups are the thinking for a change. Groups are going great in the jail. We've graduated seven inmates so far. We have another group scheduled for to start in two weeks. We've got eight um, defendants <laughs> scheduled to start that. So we seem really into it. It's working out well. Okay. Any questions for probation? Yeah. Very good. All right. Your uh, year to date available budget reports are in there. If you have any questions, uh, See Phil or the department respective department head. Nothing further. I will entertain a um, motion to adjourn. Um, and but hold on, we that. I just want to give everybody a heads up. Um, we have a new jail physician uh, who's uh, really going guns blazing here. Doing a great job. Um, we're trying to. We tried to get him in for here. It's scheduled in for that. So we're trying to do a joint meeting with finance and personnel on Thursday. Uh, and today we had that scheduled for 3 o'clock um, immediately following finance and personnel. So um, back to the uh, motion to adjourn. Legislator Potter. With that, second by Legislator Klein. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.